Welcome back to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am Amira Smith here with my co-host, Joshua Meekins. What's and we're up? reporting live from my living room and from what, <laughs> your den? <laughs> my den, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. We've been, you know, we've been trying to be a little more consistent, folks, mm-hmm. with the uh, bringing everybody some really cool, fascinating creators um, and creatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what's been what's been up lately, Josh? What's new? And like like you said, Amir, like we've been. I feel like we're working our butts off trying to make sure we get everything out consistently and weekly. Um, but I had I've had a week. Um, you know all the super details. Of yeah, it. yeah. But I've had some emotional warfare going on, mental warfare in my in my house. <laughs> um, nothing that's like super crazy, but just you know, God is God has put me on His uh, strongest, bravest warriors list again. For twenty twenty four, I don't know if I asked to be on it, but he put me on it again. But it's all good, you know. Making sure I get through it. Um, I think. Oh, we applied for the Philadelphia Media Founders Exchange grant yeah. for uh, Mike J Digital, specifically disrupting the culture, which is our podcast, as well as Off the Rip, which is Tony's podcast. And for those who are unfamiliar, um, in the past we've done the Philadelphia Media Media Founders Exchange, which is an opportunity that the LenFest um, Institute actually offers uh, media and journalists within the Philadelphia area to help grow their business. Um, so we signed up, we had got admitted to the ad- that initial cohort, um, went through and it was an amazing process. They taught us a lot about our business. That was the time that we were going through um, Roots Picnic and doing Old Head the Movie. So we were like really doing all that at the same time. Um, and afterward, you know, they've kept us in the alumni cohort. They've been really helpful. They still uh, give you resources and whatnot. But they recently just uh, announced a program for alumni that kind of does a deep dive into your organization. Yeah. Um, so we thought that would be really great to, for us to do and to, you know, really grow the business as well as um, I think they give you a uh, $50,000 to $80,000 grant. So just yeah. making sure you, you know, utilize the money to help the business grow. But um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, I want to say it was taxing, but you know, as any application process is, you really have to put your best foot forward and make sure you dot your I's and uh, cross your T's. So that was kind of that. Um, and other than that, I think just still moving forward, we had a really good um, call about Dollar Party and just expectations about that with the shopper. Right. Um, so for people who don't know, we're shopping our next feature film called Dollar Party. And we are trying to make things shake. When I say that, like find distribution yeah. as well as find people who want to be a part of the project. So we had a good call. Um, it was a little bit of a level set in perspective. And, um, you know, I think we got some good motion going forward for it. Yeah, it's always it's always like really dope when you start moving things into develop. Well, it's already been in development for yeah. years now at this point. Yeah, because um, yeah, gosh, it's so crazy. Um, I remember workshopping Dollar Party with Tony. Ooh. Damn, have y'all really had this? I think it's since 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Early, early. And that was the earlier stages. Of yeah. It. I remember reading it and then he was like, Well, what did you think? And um I, I, same thing with Old Head. It was a Dollar Party was a fun read too. It was a really yeah. fun read. And like I remember just literally red penning slashing mm-hmm. and just like well, what's this and I, I need clarity here and who's this and you know and yeah. i think um we literally sat at my kitchen table and just really oh, like wow. sat down with it and i like gave them the notes i already had the notes and i'm showing them and we were like going through it and i was like yo this has a lot of um this is a great story it just needs to be tightened in a little ways and so mm-hmm. it's like so many iterations but it's like always like really cool when you get to like it's getting closer, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's always annoying. The fundraising part is um always kind of like damn, like you know, because yeah. now it's you know getting those money. So it's Linfest Institute is always um an amazing. The whole inception, like, or should I say, the creation of it for Black yeah. and Brown media founders, because Black and Brown people's perspective needs to be in the media, right? Hundred percent. Because for so long it wasn't, it was left out. So it's dope that there is a dedicated institute to like encourage and increase the number of Black journalists and Black people in media. Um, yeah, man, how we get this money? Because yeah. that's the truth. It's like it, that money helped, boy, when yeah. it came through before in the earlier phases and with the film and, and it everything. Helped us with the Cootie and Chike uh, uh, situation when it came to Roots Picnic and Jay yeah. Ivy. Yeah. So you know we got to work with them and accommodate them on that. Yeah, and that was from from, from Lenfest and from the uh, Philadelphia Media Founders Exchange. Exactly, so, that was really dope. 
That's it was really like, oh, we got to do some things. Like, we got a budget, so let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this this past week, uh, talk about it. Talk about it. I I just met some cool people. So like, I decided <laughs> to wear this t shirt today, Barack and Michelle. You know, mm. harking back to old times, and we hope we end up getting another, well, another black person. Mm. Y'all might say Blendian, black and Indian, mm -hmm. or you could say she's not black. We don't care. She's just not Donald Trump, right? Mm. <laughs> um, get her in office. I um this week I met two really great, amazing women. Um. Wow, Erica Alexander being one, she mm -hmm. is um, a Philly native for the most part. Like she grew up a little bit. She moved to Philly kind of like she's like 12, 13 or so. And she mm -hmm. came here and she right away be, started acting when she was a young teenager. And so Freedom Theater was doing, a, um, well, they did a street naming of like Master Street, the 100 in front of Freedom Theater. Because that's where she, one of the theaters she got her start. I believe the other one was Walnut Street Theater. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, she's going on to do amazing things from Living Single to um, lots of other film and TV projects. Oh, she was here at, with the Philly Film Center. She did a screening of La Mission or La Mission, a movie she did with Benjamin Bratt. And so it was her and Benjamin Bratt doing a talk back together um, right there at the Philly Film Center. And then a, a fan favorite episode of Living Single. And she, during that, she do live commentary. And then the next night I came that Saturday, um, she did a screening of uh, American Fiction, which mm. was cool because I wanted to see that film anyway with Jeffrey Wright, Tracy Ellis Ross, um, Sterling Brown, Erica Alexander. Um, and then a talk, like a screening of Living Single. They did the episode of The Morning After when Kyle and... Um, Kyle and Max <laughs> they just slept, slept together, slept together yeah. and it was the, the next day and it was trying to like front like they didn't yeah, um yeah, yeah. and then she did live commentary so she was talking like about what happened behind the scenes and just like adding on the stuff mm -hmm. it was cool but it went long because it was like 7 p.m and then mm -hmm. we didn't get out of there to like 10 45 or wow. so yeah but it was it was cool and just like the talk back portion after American Fiction of her talking about you know her film company Color Farm and Mm -hmm. what they have going on about the podcast that they have on Audible, Finding Tamika, mm -hmm. that ended mm -hmm. up winning a lot of really prestigious awards. And this, um, and this, I think it's like the one of the only ones, I forget the name of the award it won, um, but that's the only one that Amazon has overall. Like, yeah. not no other project on Audible, no other project on Amazon has the award. It's like really prestigious, but it's shined a lot of light on missing black women. But one case in particular, and she like did a deep dive, like she was doing ride alongs with the police, um, really trying mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of what happened to this woman. But also, why was it not higher on a list of priorities of police to find her before? And so um, I want to check that project out. But and then she kept talking about, you know, um, destroying the destroyers of how with her goal in media is to try to change the narrative, you know what I mean? Change the narrative a lot on how we're perceived, but also, you know, it changes minds, you know? You could change people's mindset with media. Um, so that was a thing, that was last Saturday. And then this Saturday, yeah, it was this Saturday morning, I met Shonda Rhimes. Mm, how was I that? Mean, I sound like, I sound, I sound, I'm trying to do a flex, but that's why I wore the Brock and Michelle <laughs> shirt. Because that was um, a coalition of like Black Women for Kamala yeah, absolutely. here in Philadelphia. And so it was all the Black council women and state reps. And they brought Shonda Rhimes in mm. as like a, a special guest and yeah. speaking with her about pretty much how for, you know, when she created Scandal and having Olivia Pope as, you know, this White House fixer, um, there it was during a time where, okay, we had... I'm trying to think when did Scandal come out? Was it before or after say, Barack? I want to say it was look it up during quick. Barack's presidency. Because I, I remember so. Scandal being all the rage and it was like. Oh, yeah, definitely during 2012. Yeah. yeah. So that was at, at the end of the first. It debuted at the end of the fir his first term. Because yeah. um, I remember I remember 08 when inauguration night, like the, when the results came. Actually, when the results came out. I remember mm -hmm, mm -hmm. voting day, the results. Because I remember my son was eight. and That's crazy. Yeah, and it's just like everybody, my girlfriend, um, Jamila, her parents had an um, election day party. 
Yeah. And we all were there waiting for the results. You know, it's food and everything. Everybody's waiting. And it came up. And I remember all the kids, because our kids, my son was eight. Her daughter, Medina, was seven. And they yeah. were like, yeah, Barack Obama. It's just so, like, they were so little and so cute. Yeah. And it just was like the kids were, it was a time, man. I remember yeah. um, my son's kid, like the his school, he was at Independence Charter School. And all the kids wrote out who they were, who they would vote for. But the kids' notes were kind of funny because they were like, yeah, McCain's old and he's smelly. You know, it was just like funny stuff. But yeah. all the kids were, you know, they were definitely a Barack Obama school, like Obama um, yeah. supporting school, at least the loud supporters, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she was just talking about how her shows really put Black women in the forefront, whether it's that or how to get away with murder, mm. and how she said, I just as much as I dreamed of Olivia Pope being his character and people said it was larger than life, unrealistic, she was like, even if Kamala gets in the White House, it's even bigger than what I could have ever imagined. Mm. But um, That's powerful. It was cool, but it just was like, man, this is, I just like met her and I'm like, damn, man, she's so rich. <laughs> and she's I mean, just that legendary. Grey's Anatomy by itself. 21 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. And I'm just Nuts. like, wow, she's just as a screenwriter, as a showrunner, as yeah. a producer, like she's just so powerful. And yeah. she's been able to get so many great projects out there, you know, Bridgerton and mm -hmm. then how to get away with how to get away with murder. Like when these that were first dropped. Yo, and, and it's just shows that become must see TV yeah. to the point where, you know, there's a lot of things we stream. It even, yeah. you know, but these were, you watch them live broadcast. And I, I kind of think they created the format of, I believe it was Scandal, the mm -hmm. live tweeting during mm -hmm, the episodes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On ABC, they would have like, here were the hashtags that you could do. Yep. And you could live tweet while you were watching it. I, remember, yep. I do remember that. And you're live tweeting with the cast. And that mm -hmm. was, they like kind of created that as like a format and a way to create fan engagement. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the fans are gladiators. So that was, it was dope. Like just to be just kind of up close and personal. And she was just yeah. really personable, came in and greeted everyone separately. Like she came and gave everyone a hit. It wasn't a huge room. We were at this spot wow. called Blue Brook, which is also now black woman owned um, oh, wow. restaurant in West Philly. Mm. And it just was cool. She came, shook everybody's hand. And we, yeah, my cousin Kiara was with me, you know, my, yeah. my film guru. Yeah. And we left before the end. She was got, had to get back to New York for to catch a train. We'll catch a train to New York. And it was, um, that was cool. But it just was like, man, like, to be in the same room as her and just thinking, wow, all this came from your mind and you build an empire from your mind. Something yeah. that's, we, we just never saw anything like her, for real, for real. And um, I think a lot of people didn't know who she was for, like she wasn't on the, you weren't like Shonda Rhimes forefront of everything, you know what I mean? She kind of felt like in the beginning of her career, like I didn't know Grey's Anatomy was Shonda Rhimes for the longest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it was when Scandal came because yeah. it, there was a big promotional thing of like from the creator of Grey's Anatomy, Shonda Rhimes, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I had heard of her for sure from Grey's Anatomy after you know so many so so many seasons, and then because then Private Practice came, yeah, that was the spinoff of Grey's Anatomy, and that was a really good show, and then Scandal, and then so now it was like she's like the Oprah of TV. Like if you say yeah. it's a Shonda Rhimes project, people going to tune in because they're exactly. going to say it's got to be good. It's Shonda, you know. Yeah. And didn't she have like Shonda Land where like it was like well, one of her shows came on, another one went off, and it was like back to back to back Shonda? Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah man. That just that. that's that's crazy. Did she did she drop any like gems? Did she give any like advice or, or it, was it, it, it was it was more focused? No, it was it was a some advice, just not even so much advice. It was just more about, you know, you can't be what you don't see. Mm. You know, and so that was what she wanted to put. I mean, that's what the whole premise of our show, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. disruptors in the culture. We want you to meet um, creatives and learn their blueprint for success, their pitfalls and everything. Hopefully it creates a roadmap, you know, some gems and some advice for people because you have yeah. to be, you have to see it to be it, you know? Yep. And that's similar, right? Like how we've had everybody from fashion technical designers to photographers to game designers um but yeah so she was more or less people they were kind of saying you may have primed the because that's what happens you know in hollywood sometimes they you yeah. they call it like a priming effect where sometimes media and entertainment can introduce people to like ideas so that when it comes to pass an actual reality in real life they're so much more susceptible to it yeah right 
So, yeah. So more of that and, and more politics. It was more about, yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess the advice would be, she was saying, you don't have to have a, a lot of followers. If you know three people, you have a platform. Wow. You can communicate to the people, those three people, why it's important to vote, you know, no matter how you decide to do it, but why it's important to vote. And they were like, really, this was as of Saturday, like they were like, it's 38 days left, you know, until the election. Wow. So now we're talking, we're at 36 days, you know? So it's just kind of like, you don't have a lot of time. And although sometimes we don't want to talk about things, but you know, I think there's people who get it. Like some people know that if I want to promote an idea, I have to talk about it and I have to yeah. like be an evangelist for it. So it was, it was more about using your platform, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but also how black women always saving democracy. <laughs> 100%. You know, <laughs> hundred percent. Yeah, so that was cool, but it was just like, damn. And it's so funny at the end of it, they did photo ops, but mm -hmm. me and my cousin was out because as soon as she walked up, and said hello. I'm like, hi, Shonda. Like, let me take a photo <laughs> with you. Like, I just, I sometimes hate though when I'm when I like really like someone who I looked up to. Yeah. I, I don't really. I should have probably took a selfie too. I get. I just had a goofiest smile in my pictures. Like when I met Janet, cheesing. like when I met Janet Jackson, I was cheesing so hard that I'm like, it ain't damn. Like I was like, Ugh. and then it's like, I'm just I laughing, was so really be like, high. <laughs> like I remember walking up to Janet and it was like, oh my god, I love you, and she was like, okay, and I was like. Like this, it's like so hype. So in my picture with Shonda, I, I'm a, I'm a little hype too. I had this little hat on because it was raining. It was like that misty rain that yeah. umbrella can't help you with. Yeah. And my hair was puffy that day, so it was just, I just look like, oh, it's just, oh god. <laughs> that that story reminds me of a story, and I'm, I'm gonna share this with you because you're gonna laugh. But I was in middle school, actually. Um, my dad had entered me into this contest, for Power 99 contest, mm -hmm. which is the Philadelphia radio station. It was a Mario concert. It was like, if you got good grades or whatever, you could get tickets to the Mario concert. My dad put my name in there without me knowing. I ended up winning tickets to the Mario concert, um, taking like my dad, my cousin, and me. Mm -hmm. Right? So we get Wait, all how just... how old were you? I was in middle school, so I probably was like 11, 12. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, thinking I'm like the, the man with a... Side with my hat bent to the side, you know, double baggy shirt, jeans, Air Forces, you know, hype. So, um, but I was a Mario fan. Like, I like R&B. So, mm -hmm. I, we get, you know, it's a meet and greet. So, he gives a little concert. You know, he's young, too, at the time. He's not really, like, a, a older superstar. Yeah. Walk up, meet him, dap him up, or whatever. And then like, you get a picture opportunity. So, you take a picture. If I could find this picture, I was smiling so hard of me right? like ear to ear <laughs> next to mario just like hype and it was like you know he just taking pictures of everybody so yeah. he's just like all right cool next picture all right cool next picture and he got all like the little fangirls in the back and it's me like one or two dudes <laughs> it just be it be too much sometimes man uh, it just, it's just uh it shouldn't mean that much to like i, I want a good picture yeah. it just be like man <laughs> It didn't have yeah. to be all that. <laughs> and, the light, and the lighting ain't even all that in the right. picture, too. So that's how I was kind of like, damn, I should have just tried a selfie. At least a selfie, I'd have made sure I got to like, mm -hmm. a good angle or something. Mm -hmm. It's just, ah, man. Yeah, me, the photos ain't, ain't meant <laughs> when you're around your celebrity. You got to make sure everything is primed correctly. You need prep time. Yeah, just like, all right, when we here. But it's just, I don't know. I'm going to post it. <laughs> But I don't look like much. That's why. I <laughs> She's prepping y'all. She's like, I'm a, it's yeah. gonna go up, but don't judge me. You know, I be having some already pics on the gram, oh. but this one is like, it's all right. I'm all right in it, like. But I'm next to Shonda. You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Like, and the hat's a little goofy, like, cause you know I don't hardly ever wear hats. I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta buy some better hats, man, for when like a rainy day. Oh man. It's just, ugh, oh man. Ugh. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. That was funny. Like, I'm so, that was funny. All right, y'all. So we've been giving y'all some fantastic guests. Um, we've had the likes of Will Toms. Again, we had Crystal Bush, uh, and my boy Nicodemus. Um, I'm trying to think who else we've had in, the, in that Marquise. time space. Marquise. Jeez. We really, uh, like, what's that? Four to five? Back to back to back to back to back? And I mean, we had Kenny Gamble. Kenny Gamble. I mean, I you mean. know what I'm saying? <laughs> we came out the gate swinging. So let me let me ask you this, Amir. 
it is were there any guests that has that have st- stood out to you any topics that we talked about that have stood out to you or any questions we could you could wish you could go back and ask now hmm um i definitely i feel like i would have had this answer for you two weeks ago um <laughs> because I, I felt like there's a question i kind of wish i asked candy gamble mm-hmm. um but i can't remember it right now but I um yeah, Kenny for sure. Kenny is the standout because it's just yeah. being able to get stories. Man, he's just been in the game so long. Yeah. And it, what really stood out for me was how applicable the information he was talking about about getting into the music industry. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Like it's the same. About, you know, having a job and just like the approach and even what he, how he was saying, like they all had jobs. And so that's why they was working and they were taking that money into it. But also having a job helps take pressure off your art. You know, yeah. a lot of pressure. It doesn't, it doesn't have as much of a level of desperation when you are able to pay your bills with something else. And then this is like the thing that you can nurture and like really let your art be as pure as, you know, much of art as it, you want it to be without it just being like, it got to sell. And let me, maybe I need to put this message and the message in the music. Like he... For sure, him. Um, of course, Crystal, because I just love Crystal so much. Yeah. Like, Crystal is just, she's a force. And what we see of her now, there's so much more in store. Like, she's going to be, I mean, to me, she's already like a Philly legend. And but it's going to be so much more in store where people are going to be like, man, I knew her when, you know? Mm. She, um, I just, she's one of those creative entrepreneurs that, her the the business grows out of an organic need an organic connection mm-hmm. where it's not about just like i gotta make a business to make some money and what do i do it's not that it's really oh this helped me so let me help other people and it's really about making impact and helping people um yeah so every time i feel like i, I learn something new about her every mm-hmm. time i talk to her um, in that capacity, but then it's funny because it's like we did a documentary on her life. So it's like just like when you think you know everything, it's like wham. Yeah. Um, what about you? What's some things like or guests that stood out? Yeah, I'm gonna have to I have to I have, I have to say Crystal. And that was like my first time formally meeting her. I'd watched so a little background for y'all. I had watched the documentary A Woman on the Outside ahead of time. I got like a I got a little I got a little hookup, private screening link to check it out. <laughs> but um it was it was to to meet her through the documentary and then to meet her in person and just hear her story and kind of how she's creating out of purpose. And the reason why I say creating out of purpose is that everything that she's going through, she's creating a resource for those and building community around the the people um, who are affected by what she's affected by. And I feel like that is so powerful. And that is also one of the most intimidating things in the world because it's hard, especially when you're going through it to actively say, I want to help other people going through this and let me tell my story and let me share all these personal things about me while I'm doing this. It's, it's really crazy. Um, and I, and I commend her so much for that. Um, and I think we got a chance to, to ask her about like how she maintains her balance or even works on her mental health. And she, again, was transparent about that. Yeah. Like it's, it's a struggle. So I think that was what one, I guess that really stood out. I got, of course, say Kenny Gamble, cause that's such a legendary interview. Yeah. Um, I really wish I got a chance to ask him uh, like who he would collaborate with now. Like if he had to pick somebody to collaborate with now, who would it be? Yeah. Um, I think that would be really cool. Um, but I definitely think, um, I want to, I want to throw Marquise in there too and say, starting to talk about masculinity and the, and the basically, what it looks like now like it's it's a spectrum and 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 how it all kind of fits and then especially his work in the education system i think that was that was really cool um so i would definitely say those three so far um and i know we got some 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 great ones to come too but those those three really kind of were were dope so if you haven't seen them please go check them out man definitely um all right, so let's talk about uh, what we watch. Because it's like, all right, we got some stuff coming up. It's like, like you said, you got Dollar Party. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Sweet Dreams. Yeah. That's, oh, that's they going moved happen. the date. Did I tell you that? No. So we had, we had submitted Dollar Party. Uh-huh. Or not Dollar Party. I'm sorry, Sweet Dreams to the Monkey Paw uh, Jordan Peele contest, which is like a short contest. 
And um, my sister-in-law, who also entered her, you there? Still holding on. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> my sister-in-law, who also entered her short film into it as well, um, she texted me today like, "Yo, they changed the date to November." I was like, "What? Like, did they email you? How'd you oh, know?" Oh, you mean like the, when, like the when they'll let everybody know? Yeah, November thirtieth. Damn. I mean, I, I mean, to me, I feel like they underestimated how many people would enter. Probably. They probably you know did. They probably got need more time to go over applications. Exactly. Um, but I'm just like, damn, because we was looking like, look, whether you, it, I ain't going to say that, though, because they might be like, yeah. well, then go ahead then. Because um, <laughs> I was going to say, we was thinking whether we, we got it through or not, we were still trying to go into production before it, 100%. end of year. Yeah. But no, we won't be able to make it. Just nah. for their purposes, if if anybody out there in the ether is listening from them, we we can't make it without y'all. <laughs> like we gotta we gotta we gotta win. Yeah. Um, put us in the running, please. Yeah. Damn. So like with with those coming up, it's also I've been trying to do a better I better thing of like actually consuming content a little mm-hmm, bit too, especially mm-hmm, stuff that mm-hmm. I hear is really good. Yeah. So what you've been watching? I mean, well, one thing that you were watching. Yeah. That. Cause I was on you, like man. If you don't start watching Raising Canaan, yeah. So we could you could catch it. We could talk about it. Yeah. But you were watching Shogun. Yeah. And then Shogun swept the Emmys. Real. Shogun was amazing. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. And I, I I can't I I literally can't stop talking about how just the storyline, the importance of the characters, how each character played a role. I didn't feel like any time was wasted. Shogun was absolutely a stand, like outstanding. If you haven't yeah. seen it, definitely check it out on Hulu. Um, it's really really good. So it's like I already was like I gotta get. To, I'm sometimes I'm late with some yeah. stuff. It's like ah, um, but what else you been watching? Um, I want to see. So me and my father in law are gonna watch Alien Romulus. I want to see that really bad. I have not seen it yet. I'm a big like Alien fan, like the the movies. Um, I, I probably oh that's one of the new Alien that. movies. Oh yeah, so it's a, it's Alien Romulus is a part of the Alien series. Okay, um, I think it's between. Uh, I can't remember the story uh, where it falls in the timeline, but um, yeah, it's it's basically a, a younger cast which I really enjoy going up into space and then you know kind of getting caught with the whole alien situation, like how they all get caught. So, so yeah. I want to see that really bad. And um, I I recently saw a movie and I cannot think of the name of it for the life of me. So like my in laws are always watching movies, so whenever we go over there, whatever's on, we kind of just watch. Yeah, um, but who was in it? We, I cannot. I, I, when I tell you, I cannot remember. I remember literally sitting down with my father in law, just being like, "Oh, what's this?" and just sitting there watching. It. I just don't remember the name of it, mm-hmm. or even like, it was an action movie. I'm like, was it worth a damn? You can't remember it. Nah, it probably was just something <laughs> that was on for real. I, I hate to say, was it, it like good that. though? It was cool. It was cool. It, was, oh. you know, it, it wasn't um, like, oh, I got I watched this again. It was all right. It was. Yeah, you know what I could say. Um, Speak like from earlier topic, American fiction was so good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You saw that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, that mm-hmm. was so good. Um, I mean, the acting was just good, but it also a, was it like star-studded cast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, master. Like, come on, Jeffrey Wright, he's yeah. a master. But that Sterling K. Brown. Yeah, it it was so good, and um, Sterling, it's he's not the same kind of Sterling K. Brown. You know who his character reminded me of? Who? My friend Jermaine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Brilliant. Really? But cra- oh wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. brilliant but crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 like fun. Yeah. Um, but that movie had a unique ability to like where you're just like you feel deeply, but then you're cracking up at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like the- I don't know if it's called disarming. Is that like disarming? Like it makes you feel it draws you in, makes you feel really comfortable, and then kind of like hits you. Yeah, I guess so. Cause it's like the one scene, it's like I for people who haven't seen, I don't want to give a spoiler, but like mm-hmm. Tracy Ellis Ross, there's a moment. And it was so shocking because it just hits you. That I remember I went with um, me and Jermaine's homegirl. And I was just like, oh, and I could feel it. And I just was like, oh my God. I started crying. And I could tell she was crying too. And then the next scene is like they had this joke and you're laughing so hard. It's just it's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it takes you all over, but it's such yeah. a good film. It's a great, I mean, they, they want to ask her for best like screenplay, I believe. It's like yeah, a yeah. really great premise. Um, Reasonable Doubt on Hulu with um, Emma Yatsi. You watch the new season? Yeah. I'm I have to up. watch the new season because the main, Vaughn is in that. My homie Vaughn. So, uh, okay. That's Vaughn. So, I'm going to get his hint. Vaughn is in our deck for Sweet Dreams. He is. 
And I was sitting and, there when he came on the screen. I said, that's that handsome fella that uh, Josh <laughs> had in for us. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so like hey, old lady. Like I said, his team says, team said they're interested. So they better stop playing with us. Today. Come on, man. Monkey Paul, you see who we got. We yeah. Josh knew he was next. Josh had him in those sweet dreams. So sweet and sweet dreams is another one. Josh yeah. has had this screenplay. I think that's since like 2018. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, the first iteration of it was uh, 2019 before COVID. I'm frozen. Uh, yeah, you're frozen. I oh think you're going to start moving again. Oh, please. But your audio is still going. Damn, this is going to be a goofy edit. <laughs> Can you turn your camera on and off? You know, it's my phone. Oh, my camera over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, oh. the, on the app. This is a crazy face to freeze <laughs> Let me take a screenshot real quick. This is, oh, dang. You fixed yeah, it. Yeah, got you. <laughs> got you. <laughs> I thought you was going to get me. <laughs> I love to put that on your profile. <laughs> At this point, we might got to lead us in here, man. <laughs> you laugh, you cracking up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh man. Yo, oh man. I, I gotta, I gotta get something. I gotta get some things situated. I got you. That like, great hit. We got you. I told man, you. Yeah, or just a new phone. It might be my. Oh. It might be my phone. My phone old. Oh, I ain't think about eleven. That, yeah. Um, great. but I mean, they they got to come on. So Vaughn. Yeah, with this season. I saw all of it. You haven't watched season yeah. two yet, A Reasonable I, Doubt? No, I've seen season one. Me and Shadir watched it. I haven't seen season two. And the only reason it's I really watched season two is because I'm on. So, Listen. Adrian Hunter is his character. Yes. It's juicy. You hear me? I um, I hadn't... I literally just started watching over the past week, season two. Because mm-hmm. my girlfriend was like, oh, it's so good. But she had never watched it before. So, she binged like, the entire series. Um, mm-hmm. And I watched episode one... Season two, episode one, one day, and then days later came back. And I was like, let me watch another episode. Nah, man. Yes, last night, it took me from episodes two through seven. Wow. Like, I just couldn't stop watching. I mean, and, and also, um, Morris Chestnut. He's, he's in it too? Yeah, he's, he comes oh, in wow. this season. But it's it's a good storyline, man. It's good. And it's, um, there's, there's, a, uh, there's some love elements in it that, I mean, the one friend... When it, she plays Chanel, she's a, she's a, off a soap opera from before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, boy, one thing about soap operas, they they know how the actors and actresses from soap operas usually do chemistry really well, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's parts where you're just, it's just really, oh, and this way it's shot, it's really good. But that's, yeah, you better get in that season two. Yeah, Vaughn, is, Vaughn is good in it too. He's like, as I was looking like, oh, he's a, she got a youngin'. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he just did that drink with... um. Tempted by Love, Terry McMillan's Tempted by Love. He's blowing uh, up. With uh, Garcelle, yeah. I, yeah. I think we should have... Hey, listen. I mean, we, we should have told Monkey Paul, like, we we already got a letter. We got we got intent from him. So come on, That's give us some money. I'm saying, um, I'm saying. But the truth is, is that any, any I think any project that Monkey Paul um, chooses, pe- people will want to be on. Yeah, watch it and be a part yeah. of it with a name on it. Yeah. Um, what else I've been watching? Well, there's another show. Oh, I I need to start watching it. The new Kevin Hart project. Oh, uh, Fight Night. Yeah, I gotta start watching that. Yeah. Did you start watching that yet? No. Okay. I yeah. I hate <laughs> I hate that I'm like this. I have a I have this list of the stuff that I have to watch on my phone, and I every single time because I do like cardio at the gym in the morning, so like thirty minutes, forty five minutes. Long yeah. period of time. I yeah. could watch a movie. I could watch a show. And every single time, I listen to music. <laughs> I like do something different. I mean, everybody has their thing that helps yeah. like cleanse their mind or their palate. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's not consuming content. Um, yeah. But it's, I think a lot of content creators don't watch as much unless they are their content is reviewing film or so. Mm-hmm. They don't watch as much because you're always making stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good point. I like that. I'm going to use that. Yeah. Like... um. <laughs> Like even before, especially I was the film commission, I used to not watch a whole lot of stuff. And people would be like, "How are you? Do you not watch movies?" I'm like, "Because there's certain things I gotta watch, and mm-hmm. I watch it because of the stuff we're working on." Or you mm-hmm. know, um, I saw 
the one of the recent episodes of Million Dollars Worth a Game with Omari Hartwick, and it was a really, really good episode. Really, it's really funny too with them. Um, Wallow kept trying to do scenes with them. <laughs> so they was doing like many scenes, and I'm yeah. like, all right, this is it. We're here. We're in a cell. This is it. You're the OG. It was it was really good. <laughs> it was funny, and then they kicked some spoken word. And That's it was dumb. nice to hear Omari's um, side of the topic of the pay uh, discrepancy thing. You know I what I mean? About that. Yeah. Because, you know, it went viral when he was on Pivot Podcast and they were saying, like, do you think you've gotten your due? And he was like, no, I've never made the money I should have, right? Mm -hmm. Or I at my level. And they were like, what about power? And how you said, I made $5. He's like, I made $5. And then it went viral because people were feeling like, oh, no. And well, he's in which, I mean, they're football players, so they know contracts. So they were like, well, Angela Bassett is the highest paid and she's getting 250 or I think it's, I think she's getting 250 an episode. Mm -hmm. They were like, so you were at what, like 150? And he was like, damn, like you just got the number, right? People were like, well, oh my God, but do you know, after agent fees and stuff. And also- It's not really that much. Cable networks only do 10 episode seasons, eight to 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. So it's like after your agent, your manager, all those fees and the level of stardom, which he started explaining. He was like, at that time when power was, you know, first couple seasons, I couldn't walk 15 feet without people stopping. You know what I mean? So it was like the level of fame and now your life changes. You got to hire security yep. and it's a lot of things. It's, it's kind of like the same. I think when you're in the business and you start actually looking at budgets of films, yeah. what people are making and how much some actors are getting, right? Some are getting mm-hmm. 20 a role, you know, and then you have Robert Downey Jr. doing historic numbers at like 40 million because yeah. of like the way he structured his deal. And then you hear about, or even like back in the day, the Seinfeld actors getting a million an episode and I stuff. Friends. Yeah. But it's like they're doing 22, 23 episode seasons mm-hmm. versus an eight to 10 episode season, yep. a smaller salary, but the level of fame is similar, the way mm-hmm. it changes your life. But also, like, because I made this argument on their pages, but this is when 50 was on their show yeah. and he was saying, like, come on, we got to pay writers, got to pay everybody. I'm like, yeah, you got to pay everybody for sure. Then maybe you got to raise a higher budget just because Omari was the face of stars. Yeah. For like when his power for was a on. long time. Every time they did a, a commercial, they would always have him lead in, they would show him the longest. That was the top you know, show on their network. And I just yeah. know if that was a white show, this conversation around money wouldn't be being had. He would have yeah. been paid five to 10 times more yeah. had that been a white show and he was a white lead actor. They would have found that money. I just you know? had this conversation, Amir, when it came to Abbott Elementary because they just started talking about their raises for this mm-hmm. season. This is what, their fourth season? Yep. And they're just now getting raises. <clears throat> and their raises aren't anything historic. They're you just, know. it seems like reasonable wages per episode. But going back to what we said before, like Friends, they were doing million dollar episodes. You know, I wonder, it it makes you think about like, you know, The Office. I I consider The Office to be comparable to Abbott Elementary. I wonder what those wages, you know, are are similar to or or even if they are comparable. I highly doubt it. You know, it's a different demographic for show. But, you know, it it really, I think people assume that the superstardom equates to the automatic money and it doesn't do that doesn't. like you said agent fees an agent fee can be anywhere between 10 percent or 20 percent of what you're getting yep so like that automatically cuts you down big time yeah but then it's it's and it's like those are good comparisons because i'm like number one inflation is like come on it's inflation yeah so what they were making then was like their money went much further number one but also i i wonder what season of the office they started really getting into trans media meaning like um different forms of media and products that spun off from the mm, show right yeah. whether it's stationary because you could you know lunch boxes like <laughs> there's so much stuff that even if you go on five below that's like the office branded right yeah, yeah. um so i wonder it's like are they working on that with abbott elementary where you could start buying like stationary or notebooks or things that are branded with it mm. um it is, it is someone working on it, right? Like yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not the best consumer. Like I only buy what I need. Yeah. I don't wa- watch a ton of film and TV. So I'm like intentional about what I watch. So I'm like, maybe this stuff is in the stores and I miss it. But even yeah. like greeting cards, like there are so many the office themed greeting cards as I was just buying a birthday card mm-hmm. where that's a way to make money too, right? Mm-hmm. Off of like the licensing. So it's like, 
there's so much opportunity for licensing and all types of stuff that I don't feel like the networks invest as much or go as deep with, you know, non-white led shows. So they might say like, oh, but they're the crossover appeal. And it's like, man, your number one show or your network is your number one show on a network. Doesn't, they, but they always matter. been doing it for a long time. Even how um, A Different World was the number two show on television mm-hmm. after the Cosby show. Um, and then they were neck and neck with the Martin, with Martin. Mm-hmm. but both Martin and a different world weren't number one, a different world. They weren't bare, They were barely getting nominated for Emmys or when they were, they weren't winning and mm-hmm. then found out a story Tisha Campbell recently told that the people for like the network at Fox, they weren't even sit, they weren't even submitting Martin for nomination for the wow. Emmys. And she was like, when she asked like, why, you know, cause Tisha was like, you know, best lead actress. And she's like, well, maybe if you put me for supporting, like, you know, and she, she said to her, it was like, Oh, you won't win. Like, I guess like, I don't know if it was her agent or someone, Yeah. but when you look back, it's like, they, they were putting up historical numbers Numbers. and they changed TV. So it's just, yeah, they, they're just not, yeah. The the, the ways and the avenues to monetize are, is not the same, you know, as far as in the way that the network is even putting investing into the shows. Agreed. Agreed. And I just feel like there's now a days, like <clears throat> it's a little bit harder back in the day, but I feel like it should be so much more easier to do that, especially with like, you know, partnerships, brand deals. I know they're supposed to have like this really super secret crossover episode coming up. So I'm interested to see how oh, that Abbott? goes for Abbott. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, it's, it's, it's going to be major. Mm-hmm. If you know the shows, it's going to be like, you know, really crazy. But even like having the Eagles players when Jalen Hurts was on there. Yeah. Like, I feel like, the NFL, why are you not, you know what I'm saying? I've seen Quinta, since we watch Sesame Street at my house every day now, I've seen Quinta on Sesame Street and they have like a little, it's like a little like crossover and it's really yeah. dope. Yeah. So like, there should be more of that. There Man, should be more of that. And, and it's, it's just crazy. It's just really crazy to see like your own network could like not submit you for awards. Because, you know, get the Hollywood Reporter or even like the email. Well, I get Hollywood Reporter's emails mm. and always the for your consideration during award seasons. Yep. The for your consideration banners and digital yep. ads are, will come up. And it's just like they're not even submitting them or doing the campaigns for them. Yeah. It's kind of like it's goofy. It's like it's a missed opportunity. 100%. But I'm just trying to think even Breaking Bad. I feel like I used to see stuff with Breaking Bad. Even. Yeah. Yeah. I should hear just walk in. <laughs> so. I know. I hear it. <laughs> I hear it. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward. What's up? Hey, baby. That's the light. <laughs> Sorry. Say what's up. Oh. Say hi. Good Josh's twin. <laughs> you don't want to say hi? All right. You want to go eat? Go ahead, eat. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> she said, light. Oh, my God. I was like, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. I'm looking forward yeah. to Cross. Mm, oh, so on let's Amazon. get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, Alex gave, Cross. Let me actually let me close this real quick. Yeah. So I have ooh, so speed me up. There we go. I have officially given Amir my word that we will watch Cross together and talk about it on the podcast. So if you listen to the podcast and you want to watch a show with it, we might even do separate episodes just for Cross. But we are going to watch Cross because Amir's future thing, bae, whatever you want, call that hey, man. Hey, Mary, he ain't no <laughs> nothing. I mean, unless he get divorced, but um, I'm like, we do separate episodes, then, you know what I mean? He might see me. You Shit. know what I'm saying? Y'all Have be him like, on the show. They always be like, Amira, makeup never been better. They do these crossed episodes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Aldous Hodges, and um, yeah. for a long time, from underground, to uh, actually from leverage, actually from the leverage mm. days to underground to Invisible Man, um, what men want. Mm. I, I'm just you know I'm a, I'm a fan of his. I think he's a fantastic actor. Even um, I forget the one football name, but I it's, uh, I can't think of the name. It's of not Friday Night Lights, is it? No, no, no. It's okay. um, it was kind of it was based on a true story. Um, I'll tell you, my boy Dorian Missick is in it as well. Um. Mm but I can't think of the title because I can't think of the, the football player's name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan. And then it's just finally an actor that like with the Alex Cross series, like the James yeah. Patterson books, Yeah, Aldous is finally an actor 
that's doing this that he fits the description yeah. of what the books say. And you know, this is James Patterson's book talking about for like um Along Came a Spider, um, Kiss the Girls, like he just has all these, you know, crime thriller ones with the Alex Cross series of him being this detective mm -hmm. that is like a um psychological like uh expert. Yeah, like yeah. expert on psych, psych criminal psychology. Mm -hmm. And so with this um one that they're the season they're doing is like I guess like trying to find a serial killer. Man, it's just going it looks good. That sounds good. It looks good. I I'm mean excited. they did the trailer right though. They yeah. they did that. <laughs> Even having that twenty one savage on yeah. the uh, trailer. They yeah. killed that. They, they killed really, it. It was really dead. Speaking of trailers. Speaking yeah. of trailers. Yeah. I know I said it to you, this the sinners trailer. So for all those who don't know, Michael B. Jordan and um, Ryan Coogler have been working on a thriller. You can guess, you can kind of say a horror thriller. Um, yeah. I believe the actual, I don't want to see, I'm on the IMDb right now. I don't know if the actual category is up. Oh, it's a drama horror thriller. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> it's called Sinners. And the log line is trying to leave their troubled lives behind. Twin brothers return to their hometown to start again, only to discover that an, ev an even greater evil is waiting to welcome them back. And if you've seen the trailer, it's like some twin slash thing in the area hunting them. And it's Michael B. Jordan in a role we haven't seen him in before. And I think, you know, I'm, I won't say I'm the biggest Michael B. Jordan fan when it comes to all of his roles, but I yeah. love when people step out of their comfort zone. And for me, this is him stepping out of his comfort zone. And I'm super excited to see that. Yeah, I like, I, you know, I just felt like the trailer, need, I wanted something more <laughs> like... When you see the two of them, I was mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. is he a twin? So now mm -hmm. what you say in the log line, I'm like, okay, so he is a twin. Yeah. But it just was kind of like, give us something. It wasn't much dialogue. It just kind of, it felt, I mean, okay, how can I say? It didn't feel like a, a trailer. It felt like a teaser. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, get close. I kind of feel like I wish it was coming out closer to Halloween. Yeah. But I guess maybe Halloween, it probably like a saturated, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, I guess it's coming out March. Uh, yeah, I think the they're spring. going for Blockbuster. You know what I'm saying? Like the the summer right before Blockbuster type of thing. I don't know. I uh, mean, the spring ain't Blockbuster time. Yeah. That ain't what they call Will Smith, Mr. July. Yeah, Mr. July. Yeah, <laughs> yeah July. Thanks. Bring it Thanks. out. Bring him out. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, what? I was like, that. Tr it didn't tell me nothing. But it's going to be bloody and gory. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see two of him on the screen at one time. That's so. crazy. And it's shot on like, film, we'll so. I mean, as it should be. Yeah. Like, I, I don't. I mean, okay. I guess people shoot in some di some shoot in digital, but I feel like yeah. most good ma motion pictures they shoot on film because film is just crisp and it's clear and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Spike Lee has always shot on film. I'll even and, say like even horror movies shot on film have a, like a nice little like 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 taste to them too as well. Yeah, it's just for me. You know me, it's like, I always think about the mark, like the marketing part. And I just, yeah. it's just, it don't matter how old something that was shot on film is, it's just still crispy. Always. It, when it goes to Blu-ray, when it went to DVD, to Blu-ray, to now, and now on, on streaming, it's just still crisp and beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you watch Malcolm X now, it's still crisp and beautiful. And when you shoot on film, you can pause Malcolm X at any moment of that film and there's no blur. Mm. It is a clear, crisp image versus when on digital, you know. So it blurs a little bit. It it blurs a lot many yeah. times. <laughs> and, and and you know you ever notice when you watch old streaming, like depending on the channel, I guess or, mm. I don't know, but sometimes you see old episodes of like even Fresh Prince. Yeah. And it's like kind of blurry. You'd be like, right. what? What 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 kind of TV was this on? Like I don't know. Like what did you shoot it on, type of thing? Yeah, because a lot of it was shot on digital because mm -hmm, there was mm -hmm. you know new technology, live cash studio grip, audience type stuff. Yeah, but I'm telling you, man, film like for film, a motion picture, like not a TV thing. You should, I think, if you have the budget or if you could find the budget. Yeah, I you know, you know, you know my theory. You can always find the budget. Yes, and it yes, might take you, you a long time to yeah. to raise the budget. But you can but find you, it. You could find it and you could get a compelling case to get that money. Mm -hmm. But if you aim, it, this didn't make sense. There was a saying, it was like aim small, miss big or something. So, some of my friends used to say like, you aim, you aim small, yeah. you miss small or something. And I'm like, wouldn't it be yeah. miss big? But it's like, if you aim small and for a little teeny budget, yeah. that's what's going to be seen on the screen. That mm -hmm. dollar amount is going to be seen on the screen sometimes. Yeah. You know?
And the dollar so, amount does matter. You'll see that on every single project. The amount yeah. of money you have, you can see is reflected. They might mismanage the money, but yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. reflected on the screen. 100%. Absolutely. All right. So with that being said, Amira, mm-hmm. what is your creative tip or your inspiration for the week? Time management, man. Mm. You know, I suck at it. It's like some days I'm a little better, but I am time blind. Yeah. And I always assume I am going to have more energy later to do something. Yeah. And my day is always of diminishing returns. The later mm. it gets... Man, I'm like, oh, I don't put it tomorrow. I, I just, uh, man, my time blindness and procrastination is like, I need a mental overhaul for real, for real. You know? So it's, um, I would just say the creative, the, my creative tip is just attack the blank canvas. Mm. You know? We just think I'm going to be more inspired. I'm going to have more of an idea. Maybe it, let me think on it. It's like, don't, no, don't think on it. Just do it. Just, yeah. you know? Because you're going to, for me, I always iterate anyway, even if I'm designing something like visual graphic design or something, Mm. I I can't wait till I have more of an idea. If I start with that blank canvas, boom, and then I just start and I'm going to, it's going to go through four iterations, whether it's from something no to like, or even if I have a fully fleshed idea, I'm still going to give it four iterations of tightening it up, even if I have that or a complete overhaul. So it's like, man, just attack the blank canvas. Just do it. That's that's my creative tip. <laughs> I'm struggling with like getting started on stuff, man. Yeah, you just gotta start. You just gotta start and see where you end up. Yeah. See where you with end yours. up. I will say for me uh-huh. this week, um, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Be quiet. Um, for me, it is um, write down your goals. And the reason why I say that is like even if it's like a task a day, it lets you know that you've made progress. So like for me, mm-hmm. every day I write down, you know, the things I want to get done for the day. And, you know, at the end of the day, some people would be like, oh, I didn't get anything done. I can look back at my list and say, I crossed off three things. I got three things yeah. done today. Keep moving, you know. So I think that's the biggest thing for me lately is just keep moving forward. You know, whether it's small progress, large progress, check some things off your list and keep it going. It's Especially at the end of the night, let's say if you're looking back, damn, I didn't get anything done. You can sometimes go down and be like, well, what's going to take me five minutes? Yep. three minutes and like yep. do it now. Right. But I try to write down everything. Like even I have in my notes in my phone, I have a note that's called shopping list mm. and I add and take away from it all the time. Mm. Because for me writing down, I can't, I can't rely on this memory. It is, it's just, it's too much. Like half the time we go in the kitchen and forgot, forget what, why we even went in there. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like my memory boy, you know, you go to the supermarket or go to the store and then you, like, damn, I forgot three things I wanted to get. So when I'm anytime during the day, I'll be like, oh, I need, I say, put it in that note. And I may not do it or get it every time because some things I'm getting at Target, some things I'm getting at, you know, let's say Blick, the art stuff. I'm talking about everything. Yeah. I have in there like new eyeglasses, dish liquid, you know, like it's it, it's not even like, oh, different. So I need for this or that. Yeah. It's, that shot it's like i so i do the same thing with creative tasks of like just put it down because i can't my memory boy (laughs) but boy but i be remembering some stuff that i'd be like all right let me tell you (laughs) so they was like and then they was like and then you remember when they was like this (laughs) yo i be boy we be remembering some things i'd be Mm -hmm. like this I laugh because sometimes my friend, like me, my Jermaine, for instance, will like just send a teacup emoji, mm. and then we'd be like, "All right, oh, what's the tea? What's the tea?" And then it's like, "All right, guess what? This weekend I was out. Guess who I saw? Mm. Yeah." And then, you know, so it's um, can't forget anything. Shoot. Mm. Anyway, yeah. I'm 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 right now. I'm just like, boy, it's the evening. I oh, made yeah. dinner. I made dinner right before mm-hmm. the pod. So it's like, now I got to go eat. Yeah. But there's a, a few things I got to knock off this list because they cannot wait another day. A couple mm-hmm. creative like tasks that I'm like. <sighs> and I'm sorry, as soon as we're done with this, I'm about to make sure they're good and then uh, edit this. <laughs> make sure we get it up for tomorrow. So when y'all actually listen to this live, you know, you'll hear it on uh, Tuesday. But we recorded this Monday. <laughs> nice. <So. laughs> We just, you know, mm-hmm. making sure we stay committed to what we what we said we were going to do for y'all. Yeah, because so, you know, life, life. Oh, yeah, because life be lifing. Yeah. Like, absolutely. 
So, you know, with all that being said, we appreciate y'all for tuning in with us again for another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. And if we made you smile, if you got something nice from us, if we dropped the gem on you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us on uh, social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, be very specific and subscribe to the podcast. You know, it's a free thing to do and it goes a long way. It lets people know that people are listening to us and helps us leverage that to, uh, you know, bring you guys more dope content. So please, please, please like, follow, subscribe. Um, anything I'm missing, Amir? And share. Tell a friend. And share. And share. I share our yeah. social clips. We dropped some dope social clips. I see y'all watching them. Just make sure you share it with a friend. That'd be super dope. Um, you know, with that being said, thank you guys again. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.